Hi everyone uh, and welcome back. Uh, in the last video, we have fixed the grayed out error, uh, which allow us to, to interact with the options available under the Azure. But so far we haven't tested our uh, uh, SSIS package that we have installed and configured everything. So how about if we just, you know, go and build our first package to, to load the data from, from the, from the source to the destination. And in this scenario, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually use the CSV file. Let me quickly show you the, the CSV file, which I believe around 500,000 rows, uh, it contains, and I'm going to load that 500,000 rows into, into uh, my table in SQL server, right? So let me first show you the structure of the, uh, uh, the uh, or the architecture of the database. I have created three schemas, which is generally a good practice uh, to segregate the, the table based on their contribution in your data landscape. So landing is more like where I'm going to get all the table which are coming from the external uh, uh, sources or even internal sources as part of our uh, analytics platform. So that schema is going to contain that information. And from there, I'm going to load it into my staging. And once I load it into the, the staging area, I'm going to transform, I'm going to refine, I'm going to do all the checks, I'm going to apply the rules to make sure the data is qualified. Uh, if there is anything uh, need to be addressed, I'm going to do during the staging thing, the staging uh, uh, phase. And then once the staging part is done, I'm going to load the data into, into the target uh, schema, which we will create at the, the later stage. So the schema part is done. And now let me first show you the, the source part so you can understand what we are going to load. So we have the online retail uh, uh, data set. You can download, I'm gonna put that link in the description. I'm, I'll load that file into, into the shared location and you can download it for your own, own uh, 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 work. So you can see it's a pretty straightforward and simple uh, file. You can see it has a bunch of uh, uh, invoicing information that include the the uh, the invoice numbers, stock code. That means we are supposed to have some you know uh, uh, stock information somewhere, which we go, uh, look into later. We're going to have description, which I believe is going to show us the the information what the customer uh, uh, has purchased. So the invoice has been issued for. Uh, obviously, quantity, invoice date, when the, the invoice has been issued, uh, unit price, uh, and the, the customer ID, who uh, this invoice belong to, and obviously the uh, country where customer belong. And later on, what are we gonna do? Because we're gonna bring the MDS into the picture. So I'll see how we can, you know, uh, uh, apply the governance on the country column because we already have the uh, country. So instead of, you know, uh, getting the country from the, the incoming uh, uh, data, we're gonna use our master data services to make sure the country is, is uh, uh, complete Applying with the with the master data list that we have already stored into our our MDS table. All right, so that that's the the. Uh the layout or, or the architecture from the source perspective. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna load it into, into the SQL Server table. And one thing what I will do, instead of you know hard coding or creating the table, uh, because uh, once we build that package, it can run uh, on daily basis, it can run even on hourly or weekly, whatever the frequency is. So instead of you know hard coding the table, I will do a check that if the table exists, it will, uh, uh, load the data if it doesn't then it's gonna create the the table from from the scratch and then load the data right so it won't fail uh because the table already exists so we're gonna uh, perform that check first and we uh, then we will add it so let's go back to our view studio uh because i've already tested it uh before this video so i'm just gonna delete that yeah, I'm going to drop this table. So we do, uh, assume we don't have any table in, in here. So the very first thing I'm going to also delete that because what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this package and I'm going to create a new package and I'll call it online. Okay. Order. 
So landing is going to tell me that where I'm loading it. So change in the yeah. So because we have changed the name, so the Visual Studio is asking us the the there is some inconsistency uh, between uh, what I'm doing uh, in in here uh, in the in the left side side uh, uh, right hand side of the the Project Explorer. I'm changing the name, which is inconsistent because I've already opened that package, so the canvas was not aligned. So that's where the warning is. I've refreshed it, so now you can see the the package uh, online retail loader landing package is now done. So the very first thing, uh, because we are going to check the table existence and we're going to use the SQL command to make sure if we can run that command to find out if the table exists or not. So what I'll do, uh, I'm going to execute the SQL, right? So in order to do the SQL, we first obviously need the, the, uh, the connection that we are going to configure. And let me see if I have any question, uh, sorry, any connection, I don't have it. So what I'll do, I'll create a new connection before I uh, configure this command. So I'm going to create a new OLADB connection because I'm going to interact with SQL Server. All right, so let me see. I'm going to, so let me select the driver. So it's just complaining for some reason about the, the driver, which is fine because I have other drivers available. I'm just selecting the, the right driver server name. I'm going to say F B zero six. And by the way, you can copy it from, let me see, I can just move it. Right or left. If I just hit connect, I can copy this uh, server name in here. If you really don't want to type it, and I can paste it in here. It actually allows us to paste it, right? And at this stage, I'm going to use with the Windows authentication, uh, which is fine. Uh, but obviously, in the production environment, we have special account which has limited permission just to execute the 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 uh, the SSIS packages, uh, and it can read the the required information uh, from source and target, right? Not more than that. Just keep in mind because this is the dev environment we are giving it more permission but generally in our production environment which are highly secure we won't give any any additional permission to our packages because if something has been compromised it can you know create a lot of damages right so that that's that's the best practice now let me select the uh, the database in which I'm going to check that table, whether it exists or not. So that, that's the connection I've already created. So I've set up the connection uh, to my uh, 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 database because I need to create a table if it doesn't exist in the database. So let me just hit OK. Yeah, connection looks fine. Now let me come back in, in here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give it a name. Check. All right. Landing table exists. And I'm going to do a direct input because I'm calling the, the statement. So what I have done, I've already prepared that statement. So you can see I'm selecting the uh, the uh, the object information from sys objects. That is that's the 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 uh, 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 data dictionary or I would say system table which help me to to find out whether my table exists or not. If this uh, it doesn't return anything so that's why I'm saying if exists, that means it's going to check whether this uh, this internal uh, select statement, whether it's returning anything or not. If it doesn't, then it will create the, the database. Let me just for, for the sake of understanding, let me quickly show you what it's going to do. Because I'm in this database context uh, and I don't have that statement. Uh, sorry, I don't have that block. So what I'll do, let me just copy, uh, let me remove that and let me show you. So you can see if it's not returning me anything. So if that condition is true, uh, if it exists, right, it will drop the table and it will create it, right? But what we can do, if it 
if we can reverse the uh, the condition, if it doesn't exist, right, then create the table. That That's another thing that we can do, right? Otherwise, every time it's going to create the table, if we just keep that condition with exist, right? Because what it does, it will drop the table and recreate it. But because it's a landing table, so we can afford to recreate that table because every time it's going to get a new data. And once that data has been loaded into, into the destination, we don't need that table, we don't need that data to be to be uh, in, the, in the landing zone, right? It is available on the source, it's available on the target. The landing can uh, go uh, uh, and we can uh, recreate it, right? So let's keep that condition as it. So if it exists, uh, we're going to uh, drop the table and we're going to recreate it, right? So the table uh, statement is pretty straightforward. Uh, and one thing, if you uh, I'm noted down, I am creating that table with all the, with all the, uh, <clears throat> uh, watch our uh, 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 data type, right? Because what I'm uh, trying to do, I'm just making sure whatever is coming from the source, I load it into, into my uh, target table without any any error, right? Uh, uh, without any changing. So at least I have the blank copy that I can use to uh, to to uh, 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 to compare once I load it into, into staging, right? So because uh, if I start changing anything on the landing uh, phase, that means I'm not going to get the completeness of uh, 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 metric of my uh, 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 data quality, right? Because I'm already uh, uh, changing the, the data type, so it might uh, uh, impact on the data loading process. But if I load it completely, then at least I have the completeness check done. I can start loading the data or transforming, sorry, transforming the data at the staging uh, uh, phase. And over there, I can find out where there is a data quality issues or something is not right. So I can, you know, move that rows to to uh, to the to the uh, failure area or to the uh, uh, reported area, and the uh, right rows can move on to to the to the uh, uh, to the uh, final destination, right? So that's why I'm uh, uh, just uh, keeping the data in the worker whatever is coming, uh, we're going to load it. And then once we load it, uh, we'll uh, change it to, to, uh, to, the, to the right data type, right, in the, in the staging uh, phase. So let me just, uh, I think I've already copied it. No, I didn't copy. Let me just copy that statement. All right, so now, we are good. We are not passing any parameter. It's not going to result uh, give us any result uh, as part of this statement because it will just create the table if it doesn't exist, right? Sorry, if it exists, it's going to drop the table and recreate it. All right. So let's see. No connection. I think. Oh, sorry, I have missed. So oh, now I need to attach it with the connection because the task has already been created. The connection I have already created. I'm not going to link both of them. And now as soon as I did, you can see the error has gone and our task is ready to execute. But it's not going to do anything uh, interesting because we have just created the table. Uh, now we need to load the data into the table, right? So in order to load the data, we are going to create a data flow task. And let me first configure the data flow task, and then we will link it with, with the, uh, the first task. So the data flow, we know what we're gonna do. We're gonna online retail loader. Landing, right? So if I come in here, it's going to actually open the data flow. So my source is the CSV. So in here, I'm going to find out the sources and the target because source will allow you to get the 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 uh, uh, the um, source uh, 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 object or or source. Uh, 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 a module which allow you to configure the the source property the target is uh is the object which allow you to configure the target properties right so because my source is the the csv so i'm going to select the flat file now in order to uh, uh, configure the flat file uh, we first need to configure the the connection so i'm going to now create a connection to my 
flat file. If you right click in the connection manager, you can so, uh, create the new connection. By the way, these connections are all the package level connection. What does it mean? They are local to your package. So for example, if I open a new package, you're not going to see the, 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 uh, the connection information in your new package. So that, that's why uh, we call it package level connection, right? But we also have a uh, option if you want to create a project level uh, connection, we'll see in the later videos. So I'm going to call it my, let's say, retail information source connection, because uh, what I'm uh, assuming that all the information is coming in CSV file. So instead of, you know, only calling the, the online retail, even though we can call it online retail, right? On retail information source connection. And now I'm going to specify the 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 uh, the location where my file is. By the way, we can uh, make it dynamic. Uh, we will do in the in the later uh, videos. And by the way, you can see there is no file available in here. Uh, keep a very close eye on the file types which are available on the uh, right bottom uh, drop down. Uh, by default, it's select the text file because text file is generally the, the flat file uh, extension. We need to change it to CSV or all files if you want to see the, the, the right file which we want to load from. So let me select the, the CSV. Yeah, so all good. I'm going to, yeah, my uh, uh, file has the header, the first row. So as soon as I click on the column, it's going to nicely segregate out my information into the column. And you can see the column has been stacked uh, properly. And I can see all the information under proper column. Uh, if we're going to go towards advanced, we can see if we want to really change the, the data types, we can do it in here. If we want to change the data type at the source level, we can do it uh, from, from the source. Uh, generally, we won't uh, uh, do it until unless we face any error then we come and we can fix it in in here right so you can see all the information is coming from because it's a csv uh, all the information is coming from from the uh, uh sorry in the in the string format right which i'm comfortable if you want to uh, preview you can see all the the preview of your data how it's going to look when it's load so i think at this stage we are good with the the source uh, object let's uh, sorry source connection uh, so let's click uh, 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 okay and now we are going to attach it right because we have already created the source object uh, and all it's missing is the connection so you can see because we only have one connection available it automatically selected and uh, the, once we select the connection manager uh, retain null values from source and null value in the data flow we can uh, select it if you want to just keep the null as it is uh, but uh, otherwise we just ignore it and still null will flow automatically click on columns and you're going to see all the columns which we have seen in the in the in the connection pane these columns are now coming as a as a uh, input and output column so you can see we can change the column name if we want to, but at this stage, I'm just gonna keep them as it is. I am fine, I'm comfortable with the with the column names. So by the way, you can see, and it will change the output column uh, uh, schema, right? Not the data, just the, the column names. Another output we, we can uh, 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 convert a uh, field component. We have the, the flow where we can send the, 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 uh, the error record, but at this stage, I'm not gonna uh, do anything. I'll just keep it uh, uh, as it is. By the way, the, the, it's showing the behavior that uh, uh, if there are errors while executing this, this uh, task, uh, we have option, we can fail the component. That means the whole data loading component is going to be failed with the errors that there are data uh, uh, issues uh, uh, which obviously is going to be issue with, with the with the values which we have seen uh, in the in the pre, uh, connection pane uh, we can redirect rows like i mentioned we have the option that we can redirect rows to another table where we can capture them for for the the rectification or or information uh, back for for the business right or we can ignore the failure we generally don't do it because obviously we need to make sure all the data which we are loading should be qualified and accurate right so they 
but obviously uh, if you are loading uh, petabytes or terabytes of data or even hundreds of thousands of gigabyte of data obviously you can ignore if the percentage is very minor so that can be uh, an ignorable uh, percentage right so it really depends upon scenario to scenario but generally uh, we were going to fail the component so we know that what's the issue with with the data that we have tried to load and let me hit okay so our flat file source is ready i'm going to online retail information source so that's my information now obviously that part is done now the second part which i need is the target so again i'm following the same pattern but this time instead of going from the source i'm going towards the destination let me drag the destination in here and i have because i'm going to load into the into the uh, uh sql server database so where i'm going my source the uh, destination uh, uh, sorry target des uh, or destination is going to be well it be destination i'm going to call it let me just copy the database name in from here i'm lazy to type so i'm gonna do it yeah so yeah that that's my destination right which is the database where i'm going to load that information so let me click yeah no okay let me first connect these two uh, that would be better so yeah so the the source is going to load the data into the target let me hit target and you can see previous connection which we have created or uh, has been selected automatically if the database uh, is different or we have uh, want to create a different connection we can do it in in here but i think at this stage this suffice for me i'm going to use fast load uh, 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 which i believe is going to improve the the loading performance right uh, and which table I'm going to do by uh, in, you can see there is no table in here at the moment because we haven't created the the table right but because we have uh, uh, we, I'm gonna uh, keep it blank let me see if I can do it now yeah I'm gonna keep it blank because it will create the table on the runtime right all right so it's not allowing me to to create that table so what we can do in, in here, because that's the first time. See, because the table doesn't exist. Let me see if it could allow me. has not been provided so we need to create the table right so what we can do just to minimize this error we can just go in in here and what i can do i can because my etl is not allowing me to create uh, to create the package so what i can do let me just go and create the table So now if I come back in here, now you can see I have the landing online retail. I can log the table uh, so no other operation can happen on, on this table. I can check the constraint. I can keep the identity which is not required because we are just uh, loading it in the landing. So now I think the you can see uh, uh, the ETL is uh, efficient or SSIS is efficient that it automatically connect the column because the column between both source and destination are going to be same right so everything is good uh, let's hit okay I think we are pretty good with this package uh, now because we have finished our uh, online retail loading uh, 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 tasks so what I'm going to do as a last step I'm going to connect it with, with the uh, uh, uh with the online retail loading uh, data flow right first step we are going to check if the table uh exists we're going to recreate it because we don't want to uh, keep any any previous data and then once the table has been created we're going to load the data into that table and just on uh on that side because we have already uh, uh created a table within sql server let me quickly come in in here and show you we have this table and what I'll do, I'll just run it just to show you we don't have any data. Now, 
So if things uh, run uh, as per uh, expectation, you're gonna see the the uh, uh, the the data into into this table, right? So before we proceed and run our uh, if we uh, before we proceed and run our uh, uh, package, uh, I'm gonna do one thing, which is just right click and we're gonna set it that that's the entry point package, right? So obviously once we build the, the, the pipelines, we have multiple packages with interact with each other to, to, to load the data into, into the, uh, into the target, uh, databases or container. Uh, so obviously that, uh, 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 uh that, uh, those packages are part of the, the orchestration that we generally design and that orchestration is going to kick from, from the parent and then it initiate the, the child, uh, uh, items or packages right so in order to design that orchestration or design the the solution we need to define an entry point because currently we only have one uh, uh, uh package that we have built so we are just going to create that uh, uh we are just going to put that package as an entry point but later on once we have multiple packages we're going to design the whole orchestration i'm going to show you how we can right now everything is hard coded within the package we will convert it into into the uh into the dynamic uh uh, ETL or I would say dynamic pipeline that run based on the metadata, right? And then we will uplift it into into the Azure Data Factory. That's that's a scope of of this uh, tutorial, right? So I think we are good. Let's hit start to see whether it's going to run as expected. And by the way, once this uh, uh, the uh, uh sign is is uh blinking uh it shows the progress you can go inside and you can see the progress like you can see it has loaded uh almost five hundred thousand rows into into my uh table uh, and everything is successful so we have 541 uh a thousand rows or i would say 542 uh, uh more or less records into my table so let's do the first check let me run the first thousand rows and you can see the the uh the uh, the speed of the query is really quick uh because we haven't actually put any join we are just selecting the top thousand right so things are going really well and by the way if you have noticed the speed it load the the 500 thousand half a million row a uh, very quickly like a couple of seconds it just took to load it so imagine if we have you know a couple of hundred millions it's not gonna take more time if you have designed everything properly in in in, in your database right so just from the completeness perspective let me just run the the count and we can see for for 1909 which is matching with with the uh the uh, the the number of record that has been displayed on our etl package so that that's all about uh, building and uh, the the etl package using the ssis that's our first step right uh we we uh, uh, install the the ssis we create a package from end to end and we run it to load the data into into our uh, 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 target table in the learning uh, phase, right? We haven't changed the staging. We haven't uh, uh, built the the target state, which we're gonna do in the in the upcoming uh, 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 upcoming uh, videos, right? Uh, if you have any question or if uh, you want to know any anything uh, as part of this tutorial, feel free to put your comments. Happy to answer. Otherwise, uh, please like or subscribe uh, the the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.